Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Gospel Reflection for this Thursday in the 34th week of Ordinary Time. And today we celebrate the lives of St. Andrew Dunluck and his companions in Vietnam. So let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Gospel today is from Luke, chapter 21, verses 20 to 28. Jesus said to his disciples, When you see Jerusalem surrounded by armies, you must realise that she will soon be laid desolate. Then those in Judea must escape to the mountains. Those inside the city must leave it. And those in country districts must not take refuge in it. For this is the time of vengeance, when all that Scripture says must be fulfilled. Alas for those with child, or with babies at the breast, when those days come. For great misery will descend on the land, and wrath on this people. They will fall by the edge of the sword, and be led captive to every pagan country. And Jerusalem will be trampled down by the pagans, until the age of the pagans is completely over. There will be signs in the sun and moon and stars. On earth, nations in agony, bewildered by the clamour of the ocean and its waves. Men dying of fear as they await what measures, what menaces the world. For the powers of heaven will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When these things begin to take place, stand erect, hold your heads high, because your liberation is near at hand. The Gospel of the Lord. As I mentioned at the beginning in the introduction, we celebrate the life of St. Andrew Dunluck and his companions and the Vietnamese church. The evangelization of Vietnam began in the 16th century, and it was formally established in the year 1659. There are now about 6 million Catholics in Vietnam, which represents about 10% of the population. This growth comes partly from the fact that since the earliest times, the seed of faith has been watered by the blood of martyrs in Vietnam. The missionary clergy, the local clergy, the ordinary Christian people, they have all shared the labor of apostolic work and have together faced death to bear witness to the truth of the gospel. In the course of the 17th, 18th and 19th centuries, no less than 53 decrees signed by the lords and emperors of Vietnam from 1625 to 1886 launched persecution after persecution of Christians each one more savage than the last. Over the whole territory of Vietnam, about 130,000 Christians were killed during these persecutions. Over the centuries, the names of most of them have been lost, but their memory is still alive in the Catholic community. Since the beginning of the 20th century, 117 of these heroes, those whose sufferings were cruelest and best documented, were beatified in four groups. 
they were all canonized together by Pope John Paul II on the 19th of June, 1988. Each one of the 717 was a soul individually created and loved by God with life and gifts uniquely his or her own. If we look at nationality, there were 96 Vietnamese, 11 Spanish and 10 French that made up the 117. By status, there were eight bishops, 50 priests, and 59 lay men and women. And by mode of death, 75 were beheaded, 22 strangled, six burnt alive, and five torn to pieces while still alive, and nine died of torture in prison. So today, especially with the Vietnamese church, we ask St. Andrew Dung Luc and his companions, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for joining me for our Gospel Reflection this morning. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow to continue this last journey in the liturgical year. And so until then, God bless.